Hey, A Push peeps, how you doing? I feel like I'm one of those instructors on YouTube, but I guess I sort of am. Good morning. It is Wednesday, March 18th, day after St. Patrick's Day. I am sitting in my kitchen drinking my coffee from my Wachita Mom coffee mug. And I've got my A Push book here. planning on doing a little bit of chapter 15 with you. I will tell you full disclosure, I have been having some technical problems. Uh, we didn't have our modem, it busted over the weekend, which is completely inconvenient for this circumstances. And finally got it yesterday, my hotspot on my phone wasn't working, and a um, few other things, but I think we've got the kinks worked out. And I'm gonna try to attempt to upload this video when I'm finished here. I was having problems uploading my videos for my other classes yesterday. Uh, it took hours and hours and hours, so it might be a little past 10 a.m. when you get this uh, video. I'm sorry. So first couple things of business. Um, I'm concerned that possibly Abby and Ben do not have any of the chapters from this book beyond chapter 15. Ben, I think I gave you a binder uh, with period five chapters, which would be 11, 13, 14, and 15. And Abby, I think that that is all that I've done for you as well. Excuse me just a second. So um, I need for the two of you to let me know if you need uh, more copies of uh, the upcoming chapters. I don't know what's gonna happen after spring break, Chapter 15 will get us through the end of this week. Um, I've got a feeling, but I don't know anything more than you guys know. So um, there's a possibility you'll need your books at home. So if you need a book uh, or more chapters from the book, let me know and we'll make that happen. All right, so second disclosure, uh, as I pulled up my lessons from last year and I'm looking at them on my, I'm looking at my PowerPoint on my computer right now, it appears that I was in a panic mode and I borrowed my lessons from my other uh, 11th grade class on reconstruction. A lot of the information is the same, but this PowerPoint does not specifically track with chapter 15 in your book. So it's really important that you read chapter 15. Later today, I'm gonna send you guys the links to the crash course and um, probably Adam Norris's um, videos on reconstruction in this particular chapter. So the information that I'm going to share with you today through this video and as well um, from the PowerPoint will be similar to the information in your book, but since yours is a college level book, it goes a little deeper um, and talks more about the big picture rather than the specific. So, but I'm going to go ahead and teach this lesson with this PowerPoint. I'm going to email you the PowerPoint. So when you get the PowerPoint and you get this video, you can hopefully look at the video uh, or watch the video while you're looking at the PowerPoint as well on your screen, on your computer screen. So, all right. Uh, so what is reconstruction? Uh, when you pull up this uh, PowerPoint, you will see a picture, a political cartoon of some disturbing images. And it says, I think it says March of 1869. It depicts the events in the South. It has two people being lynched, one of them, um, it's probably supposed to be a scallywag and the other one a carpetbagger and then there's also a mule or donkey with the letters KKK uh, written on the side of the donkey. Pretty much sums up the era of Reconstruction. Um, the presidents of Reconstruction start with Abraham Lincoln. Um, before we go into that, however, I want to give you the definition that um, we're going to use for Reconstruction. Uh, Reconstruction is a period of time from 1865 to 1877 during which the states that had seceded to the Confederacy were controlled by the federal government before being readmitted back into the Union. And the way that I like to look at it is that the word reconstruction, uh, the root word reconstruct means to put back together. And so this was a, this was a time uh, that our leaders were trying to figure out how to put the country back together, how to reestablish a Union of States. Um, in particular, how to readmit those southern states after they had been very naughty. 
Um, and some people wanted to go easy on them. Some people wanted to, uh, had a bloodlust for what the South had done. And that was, uh, so that takes us back to our president. So our presidents during the era of reconstruction from 1865 to 1877, the first one does include President Lincoln. Uh, he only lived a few months during that era, but he was working on his plan for reconstruction all the way back, uh, starting in, I think, 1863. He called it his 10% plan. Um, or that's, that's what his critics called it. Uh, he supported the idea that if 10% of um, eligible voting members of a state would pledge loyalty to the union, then those states could begin the process of uh, rewriting their constitutions, re-electing leaders to send to Washington, D.C., re-elect governors and that sort of thing. Uh, his vice president, Andrew Johnson, is the next president of Reconstruction. Johnson served out the remainder of Lincoln's second term, so almost four years, from 65 to 69. Johnson pretty much stuck with Lincoln's idea of a 10% plan, but he was a bitter Southerner that didn't like the planter class and wanted to kind of stick it to him. So he added a few things we'll talk about in a minute. And then the superstar, the war hero, uh, Ulysses S. Grant, served from 1869 to 1877, and he was, um, he served the longest period of time during Reconstruction. The first four years of his administration were pretty successful, especially in conquering the KKK and establishing safe zones for blacks to vote in the South. Uh, but as the as Reconstruction wore on and Northerners were forced to pay taxes to pay for Reconstruction, um, things kind of fell apart in his second term and the KKK came back to power. Uh, the final president of Reconstruction, actually Reconstruction ends with the election of Rutherford B. Hayes in 1877. Um, and we'll talk about that in just a bit. All right, I've got to get some more coffee in my system. All right, after the definition for Reconstruction, uh, there's a slide that says, what problems did the nation have to come to terms with following the war? Uh, your textbook talks a lot, has the, the headings for several of the um, units following uh, the introduction uh, will kind of guide your learning related to the issues um, associated with Reconstruction and what, what that meant for America at the end of the Civil War, what pro sort of problems they were going to have to overcome. Um, and I'm, I'm going to list some of those, but you're, you definitely need to um, read your chapter 15. Um, biggest problem for the southern states that were hoping to ease back into the Union's fold uh, was that uh, the chief supporter going easy on the South was now gone. Abraham Lincoln would have been their, probably their biggest advocate, uh, and he was no longer here. And so uh, what philosophy would uh, replace him? Um, of course, in the South, major cities were destroyed. Sherman had done his uh, terrible um, destruction of Georgia and South Carolina. Um, the plantation, plantation system as they knew it, with free labor, so, so to speak, um, or slave labor was no more, um, which was devastating for not just the planter class, but also for um, poor white farmers who sometimes rented out slaves to do the work. Um, so their labor infrastructure was decimated. Um, and now you have literally millions of free black Americans. What do we do with them? What? How do we help them? How do we educate them? How do we help them find work? Do they stay in the South? Do they move to the cities? Are they a threat to immigrants who are working in the industrial complex of uh, New England and the East Coast and the Great Lakes? Uh, what do we do? How, how do we help them? And then, um, of course, the biggest question of all was at what point do these states have the right to become uh, part of the Union again? with the right to cast votes in the United States Senate, the United States House of Representatives. Will they just go back to their old ways? Have their hearts changed? Not really. <laughs> so that's gonna be a problem as well. Uh, and then the next slide uh, breaks down again, kind of the three phases of reconstruction. So I will reiterate here what it says. It says reconstruction overview, 1863 was when Lincoln introduced the idea of the 10% plan. Um, the official law was called the Proclamation of Amnesty and Reconstruction. It's important to know. Uh, from 1865 to 1867, when Andrew Johnson was 
trying to fine tune Lincoln's 10% plan. It was called presidential reconstruction. So it was Lincoln's plans with some minor changes. And then the radical Republicans, uh, chief of which is Thaddeus Stevens and Charles Sumner, uh, they wanted to let the South have it. And so ultimately they um, pulled reconstruction away from the president because they had a veto proof majority uh, in Congress. And so they took control of Reconstruction and did what they wanted to do. Um, and that period of time from 1867 to 1877, which is 10 years, is called Congressional Reconstruction. So 10% plan, Presidential Reconstruction, and then Congressional Reconstruction under the uh, Radical Republicans. Um, just in general, uh, go back to Lincoln's 10% plan. The, the slides kind of break it down for you and shall tell you what each of those plans consisted of. And I'm going to read them. 10% um, of the eligible voters in southern states must swear an oath of loyalty to the, to the Union. Uh, under Lincoln's plan, all Confederates would be pardoned, um, except for the high-ranking Confederate officials or those who committed war crimes. So President Jefferson Davis, if he's caught, which he is eventually, uh, he's going to go to jail. Um, but just the average rank and file, a lot of the generals, the soldiers, they just all went home and started life again. They were not arrested. Um, states could form new governments um, once they pledged this 10% uh, of loyalty. Uh, they could gain representation in Congress again. Um, and under Lincoln's plan, as early as 1863 is my understanding, Arkansas, Louisiana, Tennessee, and Virginia all began the process of considering uh, joining the Union again. Uh, so they probably already knew the writing was on the wall, uh, though they fought on. Um, and then presidential reconstruction. This is during the Andrew Johnson administration. Um, so Andrew Johnson moved forward with Lincoln's plans with minor changes. Um, one of the significant changes uh, was that he was, um, I guess, sticking it to them. He required the remaining states, other than the four that I just mentioned, um, he t said that they had to formally withdraw their articles of secession. It was kind of like in your face. Um, you, you, you're going to um, basically say, I'm sorry, um, as well as swearing allegiance to the Union. Those states were also going to have to ratify the 13th Amendment. Uh, the 13th Amendment was already the law of the land, but he wanted each of those states that had seceded to ratify that um, amendment as well to acknowledge that slavery was dead. Um, he was not in favor of giving black people the right to vote or black suffrage. Um, he, he, did, he was probably one of the mo most racist presidents we've ever had as far as um, things that he said, his actions that he took. Uh, and he did not believe that black people were on par with white people and absolutely did not want them to have the right to vote, which um, is going to um, just really upset the radical Republicans. Um, while he was um, in charge of Reconstruction, several of the states that had already complied with part of Lincoln's plan and part of Johnson's plan had already elected representatives to go to Washington, D.C. And so in 1865, when the session began, I think in August or September, it might have even been later than that, so just a few months after the war was over, uh, they sent their delegations back to Washington, D.C. with the assumption that they were going to get to begin serving again. And Thaddeus Stevens and his cronies showed up at the Capitol building and they actually physically shut the doors, locked the doors, and refused to allow them uh, admittance into the Capitol and sent them back home. And uh, which again was um, pretty upsetting to those southern states that had done what Lincoln had wanted them to do. Uh, obviously, the radical Republicans did not want them having a say so in reconstruction and having an in reconstruction and having a vote. Um, and then under congressional reconstruction, the South is squeezed, and this is when the military comes involved. Um, because Congress did have a veto proof majority, everything that the president uh, vetoed, they were overriding. First time in American history that uh, that had happened. Uh, so every veto that Andrew Johnson uh, made, they overrode it, and that thereby taking control of Reconstruction. So they started passing laws uh, that he would veto, and they would override. Probably the most important, um, well, general piece of legislation, which I'm looking here, and I don't think it's on here. Um, I will add it was the Civil Rights Bill or Civil Rights Act of 1866. It was the first time 
um, that a piece of legislation in the halls of Congress included black suffrage or the rights for black people to vote. Um, of course, he Andrew Johnson vetoed it, and then Congress overrode the veto, and so the, the um, Civil Rights Act of 1866 became the law of the land. And then to make sure that it stuck, uh, the Radical Republicans introduced the 14th Amendment to con to, uh, into Congress uh, for their approval. Um, it's called the Citizenship Amendment, so the 13th Amendment says you are no longer slaves, the 14th Amendment clarifies that since you are no longer slaves, you are now citizens of this country with all the rights and privileges of citizenship, which of course includes voting. Um, uh, so it doubled up on what the Civil Rights Act of 1866 had said. Um, let's see here. It promised, the 14th Amendment promised uh, equal protection under the law. But in fact, some people argue that the 14th Amendment is the most important amendment in our entire Constitution because it does promise people equal access to the law. It says, irregardless of race, color, gender, um, I don't think it says gender, uh, religion, uh, that no matter what, uh, everybody has equal access under the law. The law does not differentiate based upon anything. And so, um, and that black people have the right to vote. However, um, the southern states did begin to pass laws that still prevented black people from voting. Uh, they were a little bit tricky about it, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, every single southern state rejected the 14th Amendment during this radical, re Repub radical Reconstruction era, the Congressional Reconstruction under the Radical Republicans, except for the state of Tennessee, which is where Andrew Johnson was from. Um, and then they passed another law called the Reconstruction Act of 1867, which then sent troops down into the South. The primary purpose of the troops was not to um, uh, be big brother in the South as far as, um, you know, just simple law and order. The primary purpose that they were there was to make sure that black people were protected and that they were, their, their right to vote was protected. And during those first initial years, the, the military also went after the KKK and uh, pretty much squashed them or at least forced them to go underground. They didn't disappear, they just went underground. And so for a three or four year period of time, um, more like a three year period of time, black people would have the right to exercise the right to vote in the South. Uh, the KKK was diminished. Um, Republicans filled all of the offices of Southern states, Southern legislatures. Um, black um, members of uh, state legislatures were elected um, also to uh, the federal level. Um, so black Americans actually did get to experience what they had hoped they would get to experience in the initial aftermath of the Civil War, but unfortunately it did not last very long. Um, let's see here. Um, during this re Congressional Reconstruction period, Thaddeus Stevens and the Radical Republicans despised um, Andrew Jackson, and they passed a law to trick him into disobeying the law so that they could impeach him. It was called the Tenure of Office Act. Um, there was a cabinet member named Secretary of War Stanton that Johnson did not get along with. Uh, he was kind of controlling, and so Johnson wanted to fire him. Uh, but the, the Radical Republicans liked the Secretary of State, or Secretary of War. And so they passed this law which would require the president to have all um, fire, anybody he would fire, uh, would have to um, get the approval of the Senate. Just like the Senate approves the appointments of cabinet members, they would also, ha also have to approve dismissing them. And Johnson was like, I don't care, I'm gonna fire him. So he fired him, and then they drew up articles of impeachment, and they almost impeached, well, they did impeach him, but they didn't remove him from office. So the House of Representatives did impeach Andrew Johnson. He becomes the first president impeached. It moves to the Senate, and my understanding is that the, um, uh, the vice president had to cast a couple of tie-breaking votes, but essentially they didn't. He he was not removed from office by one or two votes. It was very very close. It wasn't like the thing with Trump. Um, he was almost removed from office, but essentially after that he just stayed quiet, uh, lived out the remainder of his time as president, but did not um, interfere very much with Congress. So let's see here. All right, the amendments that um, are part of the Reconstruction period, again, are the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. And uh, I have them listed kind of with a short definition, but the 13th Amendment constitutionally abolishes slavery. The 14th Amendment defines citizenship, 
says you were you were once slaves, but now you are citizens with all the rights and privileges of citizenship, including voting. Uh, but because southern states were passing laws, black codes and other things to prevent blacks from voting, uh, the 15th Amendment was introduced, which um, is called the voting right, but um, that specified that uh, southern states could not pass laws to prevent black people from voting. They still did, uh, but they were sneaky about it. For instance, they would pass um, a poll tax, uh, a law that required all voters, eligible voters, to pay a small tax in order to, to vote. Well, a lot of poor white farmers, a lot of blacks could not afford the poll tax. So it was not a law targeted towards black people, although it really was. Um, it also prevented other people from voting, which... Uh, members of the Democratic Party in the South were comfortable excluding poor white farmers as well. Um, so, um, uh, in the PowerPoint, I actually have the text of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments listed. The 13th Amendment is short. The 14th Amendment is exhaustive. That's very, very long. Um, I have highlighted the clause in Section 1 that says, no state shall deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the law. This is called the Equal Protection Clause, um, probably the most, some would argue, the most important part of the entire Constitution. And then the 15th Amendment is really short as well. The rights of the citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. Uh, and then it says Congress shall have power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. So it's pretty short. Um, then the PowerPoint goes on to talk about Mr. Grant. Um, I'm going to send you the link to watch his um, presidential video. It's very informative. Uh, talks a lot about his um, uh, tanglings with the KKK. Uh, President Grant was the most photographed person in history at that point in time. He was a war hero. He had traveled the world uh, meeting uh, leaders of all kinds of foreign countries. Everybody thought he was quite the hero. And the truth be told, he was a great general, but he was a not a very good president. He was a pretty terrible president. He, he Politics, while well, you have to have a certain savvy political nature as a general, um, it didn't do him very well as president. Um, he was a smoker. I believe he drank a lot as well. Um, people took advantage of him and his naivety uh, in office. And so, in fact, uh, if I recall correctly, the name lobbyist comes from uh, his era in, in office. He would go to the lobby of one of the hotels near the White House and he would drink, um, get a little tipsy, and um, people would come to him and ask for favors and things they wanted the government to do for them. And he would be like, sure, yeah, sounds like a great idea. And uh, those people became known as lobbyists. Um, and today we call people who try to get the president to do certain things for certain industries lobbyists, and that's where it originates. Um, anyway, there's some pictures of Ulysses S. Grant here, uh, and then it talks specifically about Reconstruction during his era. Um, probably the most important thing that I want you to understand about the era under Ulysses S. Grant is that during those years in the South, um, the governments of the southern states were occupied by Republicans, uh, Republicans who wanted to ensure the right of the black vote. They wanted to, some, some of them wanted to help rebuild the South. They wanted to invest. Some didn't. Some took advantage of the situation. There were crooked politicians then as there were now. But in general, uh, re Republican presence in the South um, protected the black right to vote. And in doing so, as long as blacks had the right to vote, they voted Republican. And so it was like this cycle. Um, uh, unfortunately, when the KKK does come roaring back and um, Northerners are tired of paying taxes to fund all of this reconstruction effort, and when the, the troops eventually leave the South, um, the Democratic Party comes in, sweeps in, occupies all of those offices at the state level and the national level, and they pass laws to prevent black people from voting, which then secures them seats forever and ever and ever in the South. Um, I told my other class uh, this, that today in the state of Arkansas, uh, for instance, a Southern state, the governor is Republican, both of our senators to Washington, D.C. are Republican, um, all four members of the House of Representatives that serve us at the state level, or at the national level are Republican. 
um, our state legislature is predominantly Republican. Um, that's bizarre relative to the history of the state of Arkansas. Um, I think John Bozeman was the first senator, Republican senator, elected to the United States Senate from the state of Arkansas uh, since Reconstruction. And I think he was elected, in, I have to go back and think about this, I think he was elected in 2010, uh, so, or maybe 2012. So from 1877 until 2010, there was not a Republican senator in the state of Arkansas. Um, in fact, I don't, he, he had been actually served in the House of Representatives. I believe he was the first Republican member of the House of Representatives. He was elected like in 2008, maybe, or 2006. Um, and so for over a hundred years, um, Arkansas voted almost strictly um, Democrat for their national representatives and senators. So um, there was a huge shift um, in the, after the turn of the century. Um, I'm looking to see if this mentions this. So scallywags were white Southerners who joined the Republican Party. Carpetbaggers were Northerners who moved South to either take advantage of or invest in the South. Um, during the initial years, 90% of eligible black men voted. Um, there's an organization called the Freedmen's Bureau, which is really important to know. The Freedmen's Bureau uh, was a tax-funded organization. Hey, can somebody let the dog out? Sorry, I hear my dog crying in the background. And uh, Anyway, um, so the Freedmen's Bureau was tax-funded. It provided all kinds of things for those newly freed slaves from education. It sent teachers down, taught them to read, um, provided small loans for them to start businesses, um, medical care, um, just all kinds of things. Uh, helped them find their families. Um, that one program itself, um, when it disappeared, when the funding stopped and reconstruction came to an end, was um, uh, very defeating for the black community in the South. Um, once Reconstruction ended in 1877, it, essentially the curtain fell on the South. The Democrats took control of those offices. They began to institute black codes um, all over the South, which prevented black people from voting. And a lot of those black codes um, were um, some of the same laws that were in place during uh, pre-Civil War era. Blacks weren't allowed to own guns. Blacks weren't allowed to congregate. Blacks weren't allowed to, to marry whites. Um, blacks were not allowed to own certain property, um, just on and on and on. And so, and a lot of them, a lot of blacks who couldn't find work ended up becoming tenant farmers or sharecroppers for the same people who used to own them, uh, who took advantage of them. So um, it was a sad turn of events where there was all this hope and optimism. But once those southern states were readmitted back into the union, they, they elected the same people. Um, once they were able to get a hold of their state governments, the Democrats, uh, they instituted um, just terrible laws that prevented the freedom that the blacks had hope, so hoped for. And so Reconstruction ends with the election of Rutherford B. Hayes. Rutherford B. Hayes' election was in question because several of the southern states were who were technically in the Union. Um, there was um, the belief that their elections were skewed and that they and they were just false. And so nobody knew who won the election. And there were more Republicans in Congress than Democrats. And essentially the Democrats offered the Republicans a deal. They said, we will give you a Republican president in Rutherford B. Hayes if you will end Reconstruction and remove the remaining troops that were left in a couple of the states in the South. Um, and the Republicans took the deal, um, basically closing the door on Reconstruction and turning I will say, turning figuratively, turning their backs to the situation as far as civil rights go in the South um, and wash their hands of it. And Rutherford B. Hayes was a nice man. Uh, he was not necessarily responsible for the way things played out. But um, uh, unfortunately, with his election, the South um, turns back to its old ways. Um, lynchings become very normal. Um, blacks are... are are not experiencing equal protection under the law as promised in the Constitution, and it would take over 100 years um, to get to that point where they would be. Uh, let me look and see if there's there's um, a few pictures and just um, conversations about the KKK. Some of the pictures are a little bit disturbing. I'm gonna include them in the PowerPoint because I think they're important to see. Um, 
they're sad. Some of them are pictures of lynchings. And then I also included some pictures of the rise of the KKK in the years after the Civil War. Um, anyway, I think that's it. I'm going to send you an email and I will send you this video. I don't know how long it will take me to upload this. Hopefully not as long as it took the last time. Um, and I'll give you some instructions and email. So have a wonderful day. I miss and love you guys. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Bye.